So I want to figure out what happened here. I posted a video on Saturday about this and since then I've got a lot of opinions. Everyone who who saw kind of this texture here believed that it was porous and I think they're right. I don't remember hickory looking like this normally. Now um, the the handle also, there were some comments, and I just wanted to kind of clear things up too. There was some comments about maybe the grain, the grain orientation being bad and that causing the problem. This is one of the best grain orientation handles I've had. On the bottom, it's very straight. At the top, um, there's a little bit of an angle, but the grain runoff is really good. I mean, these grains that that start here that you can see coming off here continue on through the handle I can follow it trace it all the way down the neck all the way to the end of the handle the grain orientation is really good here there were some that thought maybe this was a branch because they could see the branch coming out but this is really the shoulder there was some discussion about there's there's a video out there that talks about the the vibration that goes through the handle that maybe this handle shape was bad, that uh, maybe the taper from the shoulder wasn't sufficient, and that it was too abrupt and that caused the issue. But you can see, when I line this up, the taper is very gradual. There's a bit of a shoulder here. There is this knob that maybe is causing issue and not allowing vibration to continue down. Maybe it, I make it too big. I make it for my hand because it fits really well like that and it it makes for a nice chopping when you're choked up I could make this smaller and less pronounced but I really don't think that's the issue because this is not the first axe I've done this on I've got it on other axes that I've done in the past in fact my main axe that I use regularly has has essentially the same shape in fact, it's gotten even more pronounced because the eye on this head, which is just a three and a quarter, a one and a quarter head, is much smaller. So, so that shoulder is even more pronounced there. And again, that's for choking up. Now, if you look at this, this, this axe, one, I've used a lot. It has been through a lot of abuse, a lot of chopping. It's even got more pronounced of an angle coming off of the head and a larger larger shoulder than this one I mean look at that so the argument that that's perhaps the issue I really don't think is it I really think the shape that I have of the axe here is really quite good um, now this has chipping from overstrike from scouts using it and I haven't used it since this happened and you can see how it's splintered and broken that way the hickory I've used before when it has broken has splintered away. In fact, the previous handle on this axe is this one here that um, the grain orientation maybe wasn't quite as good. The runoff maybe wasn't. Um, you can see that it broke here. I've taped it up because I use it as a guide. And I did try at one point to, to um, salvage it by um, bolting it together. But this one broke because I was throwing it and I threw it and it hit sideways and broke that way because of a sideways hit. But um, regardless, you can see also the profile is very similar. I guess the, the shoulder, the knob is a little less pronounced here. But you can see this handle has been very good. It's not going to break here. But again, I wanted to show this because of the splintering that's happening here. Hickory when it's good, hard, strong hickory is going to splinter in long splinters. It shouldn't be breaking the way this broke, right at the head, with visible porous grains. These grains, if it was a, a flaw in the, the, the handle shape, these grains would have broke off in splinters. They would have sheared off this way. It would have broken perhaps here, down this grain pattern, and I would have had splits running all the length of the handle, not, not 
shearing off right at the head. Now one of the things that I noticed when I was chopping, and I thought maybe it was because of the, the angle, I've, I'm very used to this profile on, on this axe, which is a sharp angle. Now this other axe, this uh, Kelly, this Swedish axe compared to the Kelly, I'm trying to show, they are both very narrow, but the the angle that it's been sharpened, and I just continued with the, the angle that was on it before, is a little more abrupt than that, and I thought, I could tell when I was chopping, it didn't feel right. It felt like it wasn't biting into the wood like it should with the first couple chops before it broke. And then the chop where it broke, I really wasn't even striking hard. And I believe what I was feeling was a kind of spongy feeling. And I wondered if this wood is not taking the vibration the right way. So what I need to know, because I have a full log of this wood, I need to know how far this porous wood goes. And if it will shear off and break um, in the same pattern, or if I can get it to splinter, because I have, I have eight foot of this board where I can where it's two inches thick I can make two handles I, I can make multiple handles and intend to for a number of other heads from that piece of hickory but if it's bad like this I I don't want to spend the effort so I need to find out how far this goes I have this handle I can mess with although it's kind of a work of art I really love it it make a good guide but we're gonna sacrifice this. I also have the other half of this board that I had previously shaped, if you watched the video when I made this ax handle, that I also could break up, and I definitely want to break up the top where this broke and see if I've got the same porous stuff going on and how deep it goes. The end of the board was this top part here. This was where the end of the board was, so if there was rot coming in to the wood, it would start there. I want to go up maybe maybe at one inch increments. Maybe, oh, maybe a little more. Maybe we'll go. Let's be scientific here. We'll get a ruler. We'll do two inch increments and see how far up the rot goes. It's not breaking. Maybe if, I, maybe if I put it here. Here. Here's an idea. Let's turn this. Let's try that. I'm pretty sure I was not putting that much force on this handle prior. This is a three pound hammer. Maybe I'll give it a little more leverage to break. Still, I want it to break. There we go. And still porous. It didn't splinter. Ooh. Now that that's a little more encouraging. It's starting to splinter. This is more what I expected. This, even though you can see it was starting to splinter here. It still looks porous. Not much left here. 
I don't think I'm going to be able to get another break out, so I'm going to try to do halfway. Hmm. It is hard to say if it's better or not. That may be hard to break. Hmm. Maybe not. I think it's still kind of porous. So to do a true test, I'm going to take this older handle, which I know was good hickory, wouldn't break up here. It almost hurts to do this because I love this handle. But for science, I want to see if I get similar looking pores on this. I mean, I was getting it, it was splintering further down that handle. But I want to see if I get similar looking things off of this. So I'm going to do the same thing here. interesting all right so that broke but it splintered no fractures across grains like I've gotten on the others and I can get that metal wedge out now that'll be easier see how that's breaking oh I think the whole board I have could be bad. Uh, let's keep trying though. I, w I really want to get a break that's similar and I'm not getting anything the same. Nope. Splintering. More splintering. Nothing but splinter. Splinter, splinters. Let's try that. There we go. Alrighty. Oh. See that? That's the way hickory should break. That's the way. Um, let's go take all of this over to the workbench. All right, so I've got the two piles of busted axe handle pieces. Now, straight off, there's a big obvious difference in the two. One, this one, we've got breaks like that. Clean, straight off breaks. And when you look at this, the end grain really looks spongy and porous, although it feels strong, and it would, it took a beating. It took quite a bit of beating to break this, but when it breaks, it's breaking, shearing off completely. It's breaking the grains completely. Now, as it went a little further, I did start to get some, some grain integrity, and it was hanging on, but even close to the handle, I think it's actually more the way I was hitting. Close to the base, we're still getting spongy porous. So, I mean, it, it's a good two feet at least in into the board where we've got bad wood. Now, if we look at the other handle, now this is, this is hickory that I got at the same place. This was heartwood, though, uh, whereas this was um, sapwood, 
but that shouldn't make a difference. But I could not even, I could not get anything like this where I was getting end, end, ends of the grain with porous material. I could not get that. It splintered every time. I was getting, it was splitting, shearing off the grain orientation. Even this is maybe as close as we get. And you can't see any of that porousness. It's all just grain. No breaks that way. I really, really think the difference is the wood. This, this should not happen. I should not get such clean breaks like this. Just shouldn't. The design wasn't the problem. The problem truly was the wood. So, um, I don't know what the moral of the story here is. I bought this hickory. This should have been good, respectable hickory from, from a very respectable hardwood store that specializes in hardwoods from, from things like hickory, oak, maple, to exotic hardwoods. And the grain orientation on this looked great. It was sapwood, which is supposed to be better. All around, this should have been just awesome. And it wasn't. This wood was and has been, and I've done several handles with this in the past. I had a large board similar to what I have now that I did multiple multiple axe handles with. In fact, I still have still have some of that wood. This is some of that that hickory. Nice straighter grain. These are the remnants of that board. Whereas here's here's another half of the other hickory that I got. You can see it's lighter colored. It's the the sapwood. Um, good grain orientation on it also, but and very clean straight grains you can see them running the whole line this should have been perfect i don't know how you could avoid running into something like this that i can see actually here i'm gonna have to move this away so i can hold this below i can see You can see the porousness in the grain on this end. Does it look the same on this? It doesn't. There's no porous pores. You can see some grains on the top one. The top one's good, the bottom one's bad. But look at how much more holy grain we have on that. I don't know, maybe it's because it's kiln drying dried? I don't know. I don't know what the difference is. If you were making furniture, this hickory would probably be fine, but as tools, this hickory is dangerous. So I'm going to need to go back to the hardwood store and talk to them. I'm going to need some different hardwood and I'm going to want to see it cut on the end to be able to tell whether or not it's good hickory or not. So lesson learned for me from now on I will be checking the end grain for pores on the hickory. I want fresh sawn. I mean this is the end I had to look at. I guess I can see it I can see the porousness in there too. It'll focus. You can see the porous nature of the hickory. I don't know. Lesson learned. That It was kind of fun breaking the axe handles, but kind of sad at the same time. This handle was really one of my favorite that I've ever carved. It really turned out beautiful. It was really nice in the hand. It looked great. But the wood was garbage. So, look for opportunities to give those old things new life. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll see you on the next video. Ciao.